everyone. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Persis, for uh, leading this project for Fezana Religion Education Committee. And uh, before I uh, hand it over to you, I would like to just share this slide with everyone. Um, we uh, are in the process of uh, perfecting our website, but we have quite a bit of lessons on the website. So um, I just have the address here for you. If you would go ahead and visit it, give us your feedback by emailing us, that would be wonderful. So once you go on the website, you see this uh, image and then you can click on different uh, subjects and you'll see uh, lesson plans in different subjects if you want to kind of get ideas or use it for um, your class. So um, Persis, you are the co-host, thank you. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here, everybody. Um, I am gonna just share my screen and then kind of jump into this whole idea of the intergenerational oral history project, which is something that I think some of us have been sort of mulling over in our heads for a while. I know for a fact that my I work with high schoolers in the Chicago area. Um, I am one of the religion education teachers here in Chicago. And we've been talking about this for a while. And several of my high schoolers have been quite excited about this idea. And they were the ones, in fact, who chose this as something that they'd like to put their energies into. And when my high schoolers say that, I feel like, okay, there might be some value to thinking about doing this uh, on a scale that might actually lead to a contribution uh, for our community uh, overall, right? So this is, this is what we are focusing on, the Intergenerational Oral History Project. Uh, there's two kind of components here in this project. So what I'll do today is give you a quick rundown, a 10 to 15 minute kind of idea of uh, how we are conceptualizing this project, but it is by no means an absolute definite, um, you know, idea yet. We are all open to suggestions. We want this to be as organic as possible uh, so that we can have as many people as possible participating in it. So. There are two parts to this project. One, obviously, it's an oral history project. Um, and, and most of us are kind of familiar with this idea of uh, preserving parts of our history through uh, interviews, transcribing interviews, and archiving interviews with individuals uh, for posterity. So that's not a new concept by any means. It, it has been done. Even within our own religion, um, we have oral histories that have been recorded, that are archived at a couple of different places. Um, so it is not a brand new idea. Yet, for us as religion education teachers who are always looking for ways to engage and sort of uh, excite young people to get more actively involved and connected with our community, uh, we are visualizing this project as an intergenerational project, meaning that we want this project to be youth-led, youth-facilitated as much as possible, and definitely um, you know, with the youth uh, taking the lead on this project. And that's where the intergenerational idea comes in. Um, so our vision, for this project is to collect a repository of stories around um, different themes. Now, I am an ethnographic researcher. So a lot of the work that happens in my lab happens in the form of qualitative research. So interviewing, transcribing, all of these things are part of the work that I do. Um, stories are incredibly powerful tools for learning. Right, we know that um, they really have the power to inspire, to educate, um, to challenge our thinking, and they help us understand uh, and make sense of the world around us. And so, it makes sense for us to sort of preserve these stories um, for our own benefit in the future. And at the same time, however, oftentimes what we see with a lot of oral histories is that. Even when these histories get re recorded, there's, they don't generally get used for purposes other than 
academic purposes, right? Uh, you know, some researcher wants to learn more about the community, about the culture, that's when people listen to it. Or some, you know, it doesn't really get used as much as we would like them to be used. And that's where these themes, creating themes and creating clusters of stories around specific themes becomes important. And so that's the vision that's in our head. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the other vision is, of course, to have youth all across North America, right, from multiple cities, really working together to create wow. this big, beautiful repository of stories. And so it can be a very exciting proposition. That, that's our hope. And so, you know, if you're thinking broadly about this, our purpose, of course, is to preserve knowledge and history. It's to... Uh, but more importantly, it's to give yet another tool for our youth to learn, right? This is going to be a teaching tool. I mean, we want it to be used as a teaching tool. And so we want our youth to look at this experience as an experience for learning more about the, our culture, about our traditions, about, about a part of their heritage, which isn't just 3,000 years old, because that we do. We teach them about history and all of those things. But these are the lived experiences of people now. And so I, it has great benefit there. And then we want to make sure that this, through this project, the youth are creating intergenerational connections. Because so many of us, I mean, even just amongst us, we talk constantly about the fact that the youth are not connected. The youth are, you know, by the time they get into high school, they get too busy to remain connected. And here's a way for them to really sort of understand um, and connect more meaningfully with others within the community. So purpose-wise, that's what we're thinking. Now, why youth? Um, why, why shouldn't we, I mean, why have them lead this, right? Why not have some young adults or somebody else who's more knowledgeable and you know, able to do this much more efficiently lead something like this? Yeah. There are specific reasons why we pick this to be a high school-led project. Um, as a developmental psychologist, we know that there are very specific strengths that a lot of our teenagers have. Number one, Teenage years are all about identity finding, right? This question of who am I is something that's really on a lot of teenagers' minds, consciously or unconsciously. And so what better way than to develop this sense of identity that being a Zoroastrian is a part of that identity that they're developing? And what better way to develop that through the stories of the very community members around them, right? So this is really a huge step in helping them build that sense of identity, of belonging to the community. What does it mean to belong to the Zoroastrian community today, right? What does that mean? And so that's something that I, can be very powerful for them. Uh, we also know that high schoolers are always looking for leadership opportunities. They're looking for a sense of autonomy and control, which is one of the reasons why uh, many of them stop coming to religion class, um, because religion class becomes yet another place to just sit and listen. Um, and there's very little control happening there. And here we are giving them the control over their own learning. Right. And so that's something that we hope will sort of drive young people to do this. And then finally, there is uh, they're at the developmentally, they're at this amazing point in their life where they are able to think critically for the first time in their life. Right. Critical thinking has just developed. And it's fascinating. That's the reason why our teenagers love to argue. Right. And I mean, as frustrating as it is, it's the best thing they can do for themselves is to argue. And so that critical thinking, that ability to think abstractly about what people are telling them during that interview, the ability to talk on the fly, to ask those questions they are perfectly ready to do this kind of work. And so for us, it seems like a no brainer, let them lead this project, right? So just in case, you know, some of us are wondering why youth, that's our thinking behind it. And then finally, we just want this project to be more than 
just an academic enterprise, like I've been saying all along. We want it to be used by both our community members and non-community members, of course. We want it to be used by teachers in their classes. Um, they could be using these stories when they are teaching other students. Um, we And we want families to use this as an opportunity to create connections um, between different generations too, right? I, I was just talking to my own children who are both young, um, you know, one high schooler and one middle schooler. And I, we were talking about this project. And I said, did you know your grandma did this? And, they, and my daughter went, really? And he said, yeah, and you're very close to it. So, you know, but you still don't know these things. And here's an opportunity for you to really learn the nuances, the richness of the lives that have been led. So when people talk about things like living through the revolution or, you know, moving and escaping um, and the struggles they've been through, this is what forges a sense of a Zoroastrian identity for high schoolers uh, who are now understanding the varied perspectives of people within their community. So that's our thinking with this project. So before I jump into the logistics, let me take a little break. Do you have any big questions that are jumping out at you all at this point? And then I'll lead you into how we think, like timeline-wise, what we think the project will look like. Is there any existing such thing that you keyed off of, or is this all new? Um, oral histories, oral histories, there are tons and tons of oral histories uh, everywhere. And Aban, maybe you can jump in and talk a little as well, because we've, you know, like I mentioned earlier, this preserving oral histories is a very, very important thing for many different groups and communities. But Aban, would you like to jump in? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you for recognizing me. And uh, we, we are at FIRES at ZAH, and we have an oral history project that we started in 2013. We were very fortunate and we're linked to the Rice University. That's our national, local university out here. And our archives are all lodged out there. And when, when you mentioned Persis that, you know, what is it and who's going to look at it? I will tell you, we had a very sad incident where a local, amateur pilot lost control, lost his life. And within 10 minutes, everything was on channel 11. And I'm looking at it and I said, how did they get his birth date? And what did he do? And what, where did he live? And how, what are his family members? Guess where? It was the Zoroastrian Association Oral History Project. So as sad as this occasion may seem, there are people that have linked up and they've said, oh, we know so-and-so. So it is a great project that you've embarked on. Lodging is one thing. Where do you bank all these things? You are going to address that later on. But what I want to commend and appreciate is that you are instilling leadership in the students as well too. And they get to know their own family. And that is very important too. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Um, so yes, Burgess, to that question, I mean, yes, there's a lot of, um, a wealth of knowledge on how to do this, as well as a wealth of expertise that we will be tapping into as well to do this. Yes, MIT. I was uh, just wondering, can we use whatever the kids write like, I don't know where you are going to collect all the stories, but is it possible that even if we can put it into um, our own publications, like our OZCF newsletter or something like that? Yeah, I think we will have to be creative and find uh, the best ways to disseminate that information. Um, yeah. So yes, absolutely. I would, you know, at least I would be really happy if this information is being disseminated in many different ways, whether it's through you know journals, whether it's through the website, whether it's, yes. And it would be fantastic again for the very high schoolers who are going to be working on this project to do those kinds of write-ups as well. And we'll talk about that even a little bit more as we talk about dissemination too, for sure. Love I am yes. just wondering that if, 
if other kids' parents look at it, they might encourage their own children, grandchildren to do it because nobody is going to go and look for a particular thing mm -hmm. as a research. Like nobody is going to go and find, go to the website to look for a story. Whereas if they see it in a newsletter, then they'll say, oh, okay, we know all these things that can be, and that will kind of encourage and have more people get interested in it. I think that'll be great. No, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Okay. Lovji? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, just a simple question. Who do you envision as the older generation that the <laughs> kids would be interviewing? Yeah, that's a great question, right? And I think we have to get away from the idea of older and younger and move more towards those themes that we were talking about. I think it's more important to think about when you think about those stories that we want to hear, the training, and you know, let's talk about that in, in a minute, right? When we work with these teams, it will be the responsibility of the teams who are doing this work to really identify individuals who have, um, whose stories, right, they're going to be archiving. And so really age, I don't think age, it will matter, but what mm -hmm. will matter is just the stories that are to be told. So if it's their parents, so be it. If it's their grandparents, and it doesn't have to be, it's not going to be just high schoolers interviewing their own family members, but I'm just putting this for context, right? It really can be anyone who's older than them, but who has a story to tell, right? And so, yes, I, I like that question, but I think that'll have to be fluid. Okay, thank you. And so, you know, let me let me run you through a little bit of a timeline from our perspective, and then, you know, you can tell us um, what you think of that as well. Um, we are thinking that this is going to be something that we will begin in the coming months, which means that the month of February for us, for our team here, is going to be all about identifying people who are actually interested in doing this work and participating. So we envision identifying teachers in different parts of um, from all across North America and then maybe their students who might volunteer and who might be interested in participating in this project. So it's all about just collecting those teams, um, those leadership teams who will facilitate this project. And, and then we kind of move into March where we envision different kinds of trainings happening. We're already talking with several um, experts in the field to sort of help us provide some kind of training to the high schoolers who will be conducting these interviews, right? This is important, because not only because we wanna make sure that the quality of uh, these videos, these uh, oral histories uh, is really good, but also because again, from a high schoolers perspective, this is, the way that they are going to be developing their skills. They are building these skills of communication, of um, you know, qualitative work, all of these things, which is going to be exciting and interesting for them to talk about later on in their futures. They were part of something bigger. Um, and so these kinds of trainings are really important. We will train them on how to identify themes, how loved you, like you were saying, how to identify individuals who they would um, interview around those themes, how to conduct an interview, how, what kind of questions to do. So those are the kinds of trainings that they would get. It would, uh, you know, throughout the month of March. Um, April and May is a lot of legwork. Um, because these things are not as easy as let's just sit down and have an interview. So it's it's a little bit of digging, like we have a little pre-conversation with a person. Let's talk, let's think about what um, major time and historical uh, things might have happened that we want to include in our interview, right? It's it's a little bit of that legwork so that you're ready to have an interview um, when you sit down with that person. And we're going to give ourselves a good amount of time to do this. We're not rushing through this project. This needs to be, you know, structured and done right. And then June and July, finally, when school is over and high schoolers are not inundated with all their academics and extracurriculars and all of that, summer is when we envision actually uh, them actually conducting these interviews. 
And once these interviews are conducted, um, you know, of course, they're going to be transcribed as well. And then thereafter comes the dissemination stage. So in the dissemination, again, like Armati, like you were mentioning, we don't envision this just as let's record an interview and put it up on the website, although that will happen. But I also envision that my teams of youth will not just sit and interview people, but then actually listen to those interviews and then tease out uh, important insights, tease out important ideas that are worth sharing with everybody and then share them whether it's through articles, whether it's through, uh, you know, actually talking to their associations in different parts of the country. Again, they take the lead, maybe they will present at a meeting, um, you know, depending on the timeline, right? Um, so these are the ways in which we expect them to disseminate this information, not just let's put these up on a website um, and then kind of leave them there. So that's, our vision. And then the last thing I'd like to sh uh, share with you is we'll share this little graphic with everybody so that you have it with you. Um, if if you want to contact us for more information, of course, this is, this is going to be our contact, our email address. And then if you click over here, it will take you to a little sheet where if you are interested in participating, if you know of teachers, uh, if you can help us disseminate the word about this project to your, you know, to teachers within your own associations as well. Um, and you. then if you have high schoolers who are interested in this, put their names down, right? And then we'll, in the next week or two, we'll get together people who are who actually have any kind of interest in this project um, and then have a conversation with them. I'm happy to talk to uh, young people anywhere if you need me to get them a little bit more excited about this. Um, but you know, start putting names down, just showing interest. And we will we're going to need people to do help out not just with the interviewing process, but with other things as well. So if you'd like to assist, just put your name down and we'll kind of get together and think a little bit more about this as well. But that's what I wanted to talk to you about and share with you uh, today. Uh, any other questions that are coming up? Hi, Persis, this is Tashan. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I was wondering, it, you said, should we be nominating people to sign up? Yes. But yes. will you be able to provide us in an email that single slide or, or a couple of slides so that we can uh, share it amongst the high schooler uh, families in our organization and then we can nominate the kids? Absolutely, Dashan. I'll, in fact, right now, as soon as this is over, this, what I was showing you actually is just an infographic, so it's not even slides. So it's going to be really easy to share that with uh, everybody Perfect. at your association. So Artemis, I think, will, sh will send it out to everybody, and then you can use this to sort of launch a conversation with them. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then um, just one thought I had, you had mentioned, you know, putting this in different places, uh, not just on a website. And since Dolly's on the call, I thought it would be great if we could have these um, every time we have a Fezana journal uh, with every one of the Fezana journals, they could highlight one or two oral history projects. Yeah, that would be so wonderful, right? I mean, it, it, it is exciting to think of the possibilities. Uh, there and now with zoom capabilities and transcribing capabilities and I know it's, it's not the best but it's doable it's really doable so yeah thank you yeah hey, I wanted to say uh, it, it seems like a fascinating project I think it will be really great um, I'm really really excited about it I was wondering how much flexibility there is in the timeline um just i'm thinking kind of the way our classes work um march is tends to be a very busy month here and um people kind of disband a little bit over the summer and i could see like having the um the structure of having our classes going on be really helpful for the actual interviewing and so it was the kind of thing we can continue with the interviewing into next year next school year yeah, I think this is an evolving project. I don't think this is going to be just start to finish. But I think we do have to hold ourselves 
to at least some kind of timelines, uh, which can be helpful. Having said that, though, I don't envision this as, you know, something that's going to be a very heavy lift for religion education teachers themselves, other than sort of overseeing the project, right? Because I see myself as somebody who, once you've identified those youth as well, uh, we'll make sure that we have a team who's kind of, kind of helping them uh, move along. And then if that's not going to happen, of course, we'll move it ahead. And I don't see this as ending, right? Like this year, we might pick, let's talk about the theme of migration and immigration and mobility. And what what is that? Let's talk about those stories around that theme. And maybe next year, there's a whole new theme that comes out of this, right? You have a whole new group of high schoolers who might want to do a different theme. Uh, so I think it'll just depend on how much interest is there. But yes, we'll have to be flexible with high schoolers. I mean, uh, there's no way out of that. Uh, even do it during the school year. And that's always a challenge as well, given the amount of activities they have. And then, like you said, some of people will disperse. So we'll have to be flexible. There really is no choice there. The persons, the high schoolers, uh, will be only from your association, Chicago, or all of North America? all of North America. That's the whole point is to get as many, you know, high schoolers involved in this as possible, but their teachers will probably, you know, be the ones who will be kind of leading their group and making it kind of helping keep them on track, you know, finding individuals with them, working with them, but it'll be all across North America. Okay. Yeah, it means Yes, so yeah. on all the religious teachers are on board with you. That's what I want to ask for the help from. That's why I wanted to tell them, this is the idea that we have. Would you be willing to help us? And that's why I'm saying, if you'd be willing to help us, put your name on that sheet, and then I can get together with a smaller group of teachers and high schoolers who are, who are ready to sort of participate and then start thinking more about maybe what will work and what will not work. Yeah, so I think this is just the initial call out and we'll definitely uh, follow up and get the word out. But um, Persis, I was thinking uh, I teach middle schoolers and many of my middle schoolers are uh, very mature and they definitely can participate in this. Uh, so I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, so it, it'll be for the older middle schoolers as well. Well, how do you see that as a workable thing? Yeah, I think that'll depend from teacher to teacher. I think it might be harder for teachers to decide why some middle schoolers might be doing it versus some may not. But I think I'll have to leave that to the teachers. If the teachers say, yeah, my, my middle schooler is ready for this, let's do it. I mean, oral histories have been done. If any of you have heard, um, even if any of you have heard like NPR story corps, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole, the whole group of kids who will, who will do this. And it's, it's fascinating and fantastic to hear. So yeah, I say bring on as many as you can, but let's also be kind of uh, a little mindful that, you know, we want individuals who can, um, oftentimes with these interviews, the most critical thing is that as you're talking, you have to be able to think and you know ask a probing question or ask a question that extends the information that somebody is giving you. And so, yeah, it's just about you know finding uh, individuals. High schoolers totally can handle that. Uh, middle schoolers, absolutely. If you think they can, they should definitely be doing this. And will they be recording it on a tape recorder or somehow on the phones? Uh, my hope is on Zoom so that we can Zoom gives us ready-made transcripts as well. So we don't have to sit and listen and transcribe the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, even though the transcripts are not very, not always very good. So you still have to go back and kind of make sure that it is accurate, but at least we get a transcription of the interview from Zoom directly. So it cuts down on a lot of the work that we have. So yes, we have recordings as well as a transcription, a written transcription of the entire interview. That makes me think of a question. Um, I'm sorry, Natasha had her hand up for a oh, while. Okay. Yeah, let her go first. Uh, thank you, Ms. Artemis. So uh, my question is, will this be more of a multilingual project or ah. like English? Because I know many, um, obviously I'm a high schooler, so many people who are older than me, whenever they 
think about their memories, they always tend to go back into whatever their native, not native language, but whatever the their first language other than English was. So will that also be part of the project or will it be mostly English based? Natasha, that's a fabulous question. And I'll tell you, when we've done this at my university, I'm a professor of psychology. When I've done this at my university, we've allowed individuals to do it in their native language. We have a lot of Spanish speakers. Um, and then we've used software to actually transcribe those interviews uh, in, and translate those interviews. So that's doable. That's very doable. And that's a brilliant question. And that's definitely the way to go. Um, it's important to kind of, we're talking about culture, so we can't sweep language under the under the rug. So that's the way to go, I think. Megan, please go ahead. My question was the same as Natasha's. <laughs> Perfect. Can I ask a question? Uh, is the age um, like a definite thing or because sometimes I find that even first or second year university students are freer in April, May. They haven't yet got a job or something. So can they be involved in it too? I, I don't see why not. I think the more people who want to be involved and engaged, let's get them on, right? Uh, so really, I don't see why not. High school just seems to be a nice place to start because, you know, this is the time where you're not actively thinking uh, about anything other than I, I got to get into college, I got to do this, I got to do that. So it's a nice space for them. But I say, yes, bring it on. Junior high, you know, undergrads, Absolutely. Whoever wants to be a part of it, why not? Because it, this, the, I think the beauty of this project is it really can be as big as we want it to be or as small as we want it to be. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I think if you want to, this is just the initial meeting. If you want to stay updated um, and you're not part of our uh, Google group of teachers, please send us an email, education at fezana.org. And then we'll make sure to include you in the future uh, emails for this program. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think even if you just put your name on that Google uh, sheet that you'll see the link in, um, we'll make sure that you have all the information about this project uh, so that you can assist or even just be a part of it in any way possible um, as we go ahead, because we will need uh, as many people as possible to help with it. Okay. Yes. So professional, I know somebody mentioned, will there be some professional help available for people to work with? So uh, I'm assuming by that we mean, you know, professional kind of training for people um, who are doing this kind of work. Yes, we, um, we are talking with a lot of different individuals uh, who actually, who, who are kind of experts in the field of qualitative interviewing, uh, transcribing these oral history, who've done oral history projects. So we will definitely be working with individuals who are professionals in the field and who can help us make sure that this project is not just another high school project, but actually a project that can be used by anybody who wants to use that data. And so the end result would be what? Would we be publishing it in a book form or publishing some stories or what will be the end result of the projects? It will be a digital archive of all the audio recordings of the interviews that are conducted by the high schoolers of um, the individuals who they are recording. So there will be a site and we try to figure out where is that going to be, right? Is that is that going to be on a website? Is that going to be, you know, we are trying to figure out where's the best place for this, but it's going to be a repository of audio recordings as well as transcriptions of every single interview that's done, clubbed by themes. And then along with that, there will be write-ups of the big ideas, the big insights that are coming out of all of that. And that will be in the form of articles wherever we can get those published. Will, will they, the people who are giving the interview have to sign a consent form? Absolutely. Um, there will be a professional consent form that they will sign before 
yeah. anything before they kind of have any and that's where if you remember in my timeline I had two months of kind of just doing the legwork that's why it takes all of the time that it will take to make sure that they give us consent and make sure that everything is uh, you know they know their rights um, as these things proceed. Persis, sorry, this is Tashan again. I just had an idea with some of the questions that were coming through. I don't know if we as a community have any contact with anybody at NPR, but StoryCorps at NPR is a great oral history uh, uh, repository, I guess. And I'm not sure how to go about getting stories on there, but yeah. um, I, I love hearing their stories. So that, that could be another option if we could work it out. Absolutely. That was the inspiration for this whole thing, really, because I'm, I'm such a story core buff as well. Um, so, you know, that's the inspiration. And that's why we got to really think about how we want to structure these interviews. We don't probably don't want them to be an hour long, you know, we want it to be kind of meaningful, targeted to specific things. There's a lot of work to be done in the beginning. Um, but yes, that that definitely is the inspiration. How fascinating would that be? So it would help if there was a kind of set of questions that you give to the person you are going to interview. So they have already decided or not decided like they have. So there are no pauses about, oh, what was that year? So they would have already done their kind of homework. W would that help if the kids have those questions? Yes, definitely. It always helps to give, especially in, in cases of the uh, oral histories, it's always helpful to provide um, participants with a set of questions, if not questions, then at least the big, broad ideas that you will be talking about, because then they can make sure, I mean, ultimately, the the problem with oral histories is that it relies on memory, right? And we all know that memory is fickle. And so anything that we can do to help them um, make sure that they're sort of thinking about, oh, I, I better make sure to mention this, uh, that's helpful. So yes, this is definitely something where they would get a set of questions or at least the broad ideas from the beginning so that they can be ready with, what is it that you want to share uh, in these oral histories? And so this year's theme is immigration? I. That's the big one, the big one that is always, I mean, it's because we call it diasporic memories. We want to make sure that people who have stories of mobility, and it doesn't just have to be immigration, right? We have so many different stories of mobility that, according to us, would be a great theme to start with. But there's so much more, like, you know, we could be doing a whole interview um, group just with our priests. What does it mean to be a priest? Uh, in North America, for example, right? Uh, there are just so many other themes that we could be exploring. Activism. There's so many within our community who are involved in some form of activism, and and teenagers love to talk about that. So you know, there's just so much that can be done. But I'll let the people who are participating in it, and I'll let the high schoolers come up with those themes rather than telling them this is what we should be doing. I'm also thinking that um, maybe the uh, high school or older middle schoolers, they could even interview themselves because uh, some of the younger generation are immigrants themselves and they have their stories, you know, stories of their own that would be interesting. What do you think? Fascinating. Fascinating, really. I mean, the, I think this can go in many different directions. We'll have to kind of start somewhere and then see what life it takes of it, its own. Um, but yeah, there's just so many different places this can go. Well, if no one else has any other questions, we want to thank you for joining us today and your interest in this project. We will definitely uh, keep in touch and uh, we're very excited about this. Thank you, Persis, and everybody for joining. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for initiating it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. 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 Everyone. Bye.